What up, y'all? Tom Meyer at it with All Terrain Outdoors. I'm going with my brother Matt on the wall. We're going spear fishing. We got the rig ready to go, and we'll be out on the jetty in no time. Good morning, babies. All right, and we're back. We got Marty. Marty secured. Yep. Yes, sir. I had a little too much fun sleeping the mile last night, but nothing to salty sea can. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, we're going out. On the old tinny rig She's behind us. Hopefully we don't break down. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. We don't got any wood to knock on. Well, yeah, Matt and I usually run into lots of trouble, so uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can have a smooth sailings today. Which one do you think it is? You or me that brings the bad luck or just a combination? Definitely the combination, dude. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can go spear fishing. It's visible enough out there to dive in the depths, find those stripers, and catch us dinner, baby. Woohoo! All right, Marty and I have made it out here. We got our suits on. What are you guys saying about today, Marty? Oh, uh, visibility is pretty crispy looking, at least for the pond. We don't know what it's gonna look like out on the uh, open water, but hopefully we can get into some stripers. I'll settle for a tog though. All right, the man, the myth, the legend, Marty Meyer. All right, Marty, I'm gonna back her up. You wanna hop up in her? Yeah. Hop up in the wee tub, dude. Yes, sir. All right, I'm backing her in. merges into the salt pond that goes out to Galilee into the ocean. So you can see right here we got a current seam as the tide's coming into the salt pond. That influx pulls in all the rain bait, little like sand eels, all sorts of things get sucked in. All sorts of little striper snacks if you will. They like sitting up here because it gets really shallow up there, kind of like a trout river, like a little ripple. And then you end up with this big plunge pool that ends up doing a crescent sandbar. And the fish stack up on both sides. And ideally we'll be able to drop in and uh, get down there, maybe, maybe snipe a bass or two. Getting suited up, boys. All right, Marty's suiting up. He's scouting it out. I'll probably just drop with him anyways. I'm going to suit up as well. I really should have got my mask out situated first. Prescription mask, maybe. <laughs> blind Marty. Well, actually, I might be more blind than him, but I just roll with it. Yeah, I think he's just better at ad adapting to it. <laughs> Do me a favor, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> dude, dude, lost Finn City right there. It's because these booties don't fit, dude. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Wait, you're supposed to be rec it's recording. <laughs> dude. Send help. Being attacked by a, a large blonde man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, dude. Whatever. Roll with it. Dude, Matty frog feet, dude. Matty fat feet. <laughs> dude, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's just gonna come right off. Maybe I should just say fuck it. Take the, fin the booties off. Alright, Marty just dropped in the water. He's scouting it out. See if he can see anything. See what he finds. He's in a big hole right now. Big drop down. Swoops down 15 feet under. Over here on the side. See the sandbar gradually goes down. Big drop. Boom, 10, 15 feet right there. Matt's in a hot spot. Let's see if you can get on one of these fish. All right, so just got out of the drink. Um, I think I saw about maybe a shallow fish, but it could have been just a shadow of like other marine life or seaweed or something. But it wasn't very promising. The visibility looked a little milky, a little murky too. Looks like a lot of sediments being picked up as the tide's flowing out of the pond. So maybe we'll come back on the incoming tide. All right, so Marty didn't see much down there. This is bad, like you said, so we're heading to the center wall. Let's go, baby. Huge bass. There's a huge bass in the current right now. Matt's gonna drop in, see if he can get on him. A tanker. Which Ooh, way was he facing? Facing this way. Oh, shit, so I'm gonna go down from him. Uh, he's he's on this mat. He's on this left bank. He's chilling right there. He's sitting okay. still. Look at trout in the river, lad. There he goes. There he goes, boys. Ladies and gents, Maddie's in the water. He's in the water. Big bass down there, sitting right in the canal. We're gonna see if we can get on him. Marty's in the water right now. He's floating down the left side, going down this bank. There's a big bass just sitting there, chilling with the current, waiting for these bait fish to come down. He's floating still as a log right now, sneaking up on this fish, seeing if he can get it for dinner. Looks like he's gone. Don't know where we went. All right, Matt went to look for the bass. We think we 
spooked it with the boat. It was probably too big to shoot anyway, so we're heading out to the wall. If we see anything new, we'll, we'll keep you tuned, and uh, Matt will take a jump in and see if he can get it. Let's go, baby. Woo! Oh, I see him. No, no, he's right there. He's right there. Is that a massive tog right there? Dude. Oh, oh shit, that's a huge male. He was just sitting on the bottom. Massive tog. We just came across a massive tog sitting on the bottom. Matt, he's jumping in. He's going after him. Let's go. Still in the area. He swam. Matt, Marty, nice and still this way. Oh, he doesn't see it yet, but we just saw it from the boat. It was enormous. I'm gearing up. This is no joke. The fish are here. We're going in. Ooh, I forgot to clip my wet feet. That's fine. As I jump into the water for the first time of the season, I'm searching for this tug that I saw from the boat. And sure enough, I find him. I take a shot on the fish, and unfortunately, he pops off the end of my spear. He creates a massive dust storm, and I remain calm, cool, collected, reload my gun, track and follow the fish, and sure enough, I get a second shot, and I ended up landing this fish. Buddy, I got him! Oh, we got him, baby. <laughs> Winner, winner, the talk dinner, baby. <laughs> Jumped in, found him, and shot him. Here he is. What a beautiful fish. That right there is a beautiful the talk. All right, so first things first is Thomas is right and not trusting because here we are with a beautiful stud. Now, Tommy boy. Look at the white color on this male photographer. I saw the photographer from the boat from the top. I saw his bright white spine and I said, I'm jumping in, I'm getting after him. And sure enough, I found him down there. He was sitting on the bottom. My first shot goes into him and oh my God, I was heartbroken. He pops off the spear and he's swimming down there in circles. He's going around, he's going around. I'm reloading my gun, I'm freaking out. What am I gonna do? And Matt's not gonna believe this and I reload. And uh, I got the second shot on him. He's not nearly as big as I thought he was, but he is by no means small. But he is a beautiful tatog. I've never seen one with such vibrant white color. And uh, what a great day to be out here with my my brother. And we're heading out to the center wall, and hopefully Matt can get one too. Maybe a couple, maybe three. Whatever the limit is, we're gonna get. We saw a good striper. We didn't find that guy. If we see any more, we'll jump in. All right, guys, this is where we're diving. Is where Thomas was right off the oyster bar. Huge Chitag was sitting there. Spook, swam off. Thomas comes down and gets the job done. <laughs> Alright, so this Chitag is really good eating, especially in this really cold water. It's just really good. We gotta bleed him, get all that blood out of those bloodlines. Makes the meat taste a lot better, even though it's exceptionally delicious. There's no way they got some fish. I just do like that. Alright, folks, we are seeing something here where they have two sets of teeth. They have their front toggy teeth which these are just crazy. These are human teeth, practically same thing, just bone. Crushers. Yeah, to crush clams. And then they have a second set of teeth to even break it down a little bit more. Yeah, you see that bottom top jaw, just find the gills there. Yeah. It's farther down the throat. All right. Many more yields share the same attributes. They have two sets of jaws to help break down crustacean as they uh, digest them. Go with what I know. All right, let's go with what we know. Yeah. I don't like the look of that, dude. All right. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> We'd be like scrambled Marty up in there. <laughs> Only one man went in and never made it out. All right, we just made it to the wall. We're here. Here's Marty. We got the wall working down here. We're gonna swim up, go through the gap, and jump in, baby. Let's go. As Matt and I jump into the water, we realize it's so much cooler than we anticipated and we're looking for a spot in the jetty to get from one side to the next and as you can see here we time it perfectly moving with the swell and the water to climb over these rocks and get to the other side 
And it's important to be slow thinking while doing this because this is no joke. This is serious and you can get really hurt if you don't think about it before you do it. After making it through, we're now looking and searching for the right detog to take here. Matt takes numerous dives, sees lots of different fish, but he wants to be patient to find the right ones. We didn't get much footage here of us actually shooting the fish. We got a hit and a miss there. And uh, we got Matt diving and swimming around having a blast. But we did end up taking our five fish. We got the one in Potter's Pond. So we now have six to tog, which is our two man limit of three fish per man. And now we're heading home, getting ready to cook them up. And uh, here we go. I soon realize the boat, the boat, Matt, and the boat is going into the rocks as the tide switched while we we're out diving. So Matt's running for the boat, gunning for it. We're trying to get it and save it, make sure all is well. The visibility wasn't great, but it was totally manageable. We were able to shoot out limited fish, and now we're just packing up. Let's go, baby! Woo! All right, we got our six to tog, and uh, we're gonna go flay them up right now. We shot six to tog, three between each of us. That's our limit, three each, so be eating good tonight. You're live. All right, guys, so we're here to flay up the fish right now. We got six beautiful to tog. Thomas is the flay master, so we're gonna have him assigned the job. I'm also a little lazy sometimes, but that's okay. So. What's happening? All right, guys, so we brought our fish back here from the jetty, and we're gonna flay him up. We got a fly flying around here, but, uh, Play this guy up and show you guys how to do it real quick and then we're going to take these fillets back down to the beach where they belong, put them in the salt water, take them out, cook them up in the grill, baby. So uh, this is a male to tog. You can tell it's a male because it's got its uh, white, which actually looks like neon blue in the water. And then he's got his big white chin here and he's got a lot of white coming down his, his belly. Just like that. And after you make your first cut, you want to come back down the spine of the fish here. Also, it's important to have a sharp knife. I'm not sure how sharp this knife is. Well, it's pretty sharp. And then what I like to do is hop over, the, hop over the spine, poke through the other side, just cut out. Then you come in and just zip your knife at a 45 degree angle, making slices. All right, so then there's one toggy fillet. All right, well, uh, we got all of our to tog filleted up here. We're gonna go over how to take the skin off. It can be real tricky with the togs having such slimy skin. You can see all the slime right here. Real slimy fish. You need a little bit of a ledge to uh, get your knife from the right angle. So I work my knife in. A lot of guys in videos say to angle your knife. That doesn't tend to work on to tog. I actually angle my knife a little bit up and I do a sawing motion back and forth because uh, their, their skin is just really easy to break through. Skin and there's your filet. center wall and uh, we're about to grill it up with the boys. Johnny's got a fire going. We're going to throw some in the fire wrapped in tin foil and uh, we're going to try throwing some here on the grill. We're just doing uh, fish and lemon. That's all she needs. All right, we got the fish on. We're going to see how long it takes to cook. I don't really know, but Matt knows this stuff, so we're going to close her up. All right, fish is done. We're taking her off. Is it raw right there? No, it's the bloodline. Is it good, Alan? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Yo, is it good? Yeah, yeah let's get the taste piece. on video. How many times are you going to touch that piece before you eat it? Damn, that's fine. Yeah. Take the first shot. Good. Honestly, it tastes like a clam. <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> You know, I could eat it, but it really does taste like a clam. 
delicious. <laughs> Fish is a little uh, chewy. I abstained after Thomas's you know, non-desirable reaction, but I think next time. I'm gonna be tan tomorrow. Is tomorrow supposed to be this nice again? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to wear shorts. <laughs> I haven't worn shorts in a minute. I'm waiting for that bottle. Oh, minute. Get a little salt water. Rinse it off. Yeah, rinse it off. Oh, dinner is served. <laughs> 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 mm. oh, that was a good day. No, it actually was pretty good. You're lying. <laughs> no, I swear to God, it actually was pretty good. Really? It's would, a river. How would you know? You just swallowed it whole, dude. It's a river mollusk. It was nice and salty. It hit the back of my throat mad quick. <laughs> See you guys next time. That fish tastes like clams. Maybe we can <laughs> work on our cooking here, but we're going to chow it down anyways. Eat it up.